Hi, this is John Mancini. I'm here on behalf of the MER conference and the MER Immerse event on January 27th. And I put a little bit about that event on the screen. Hope that everyone will take a look at it and attend the event because it's going to be really fascinating. And one of the reasons it's going to be fascinating is because of our uh, guest here today, which is Antigone Payton from Ridgeline International. And Antigone, welcome. Good to have you here. Great to join you, John. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit about your background. Um, I do know um, from a um, LinkedIn search that you've got all sorts of background that's a little different than conventional. So tell me about your, your background in, in big data and kind of how you wound up here. Sure. So uh, I, I have had many jobs over the years, and I joke with people, uh, once I stop learning or becoming uh, encouraged to learn, I do something different. So uh, I started my first career as a research scientist, dealt with a lot of data and very sensitive data as part of that process. Uh, from there, I then decided that I wanted to go to law school to be a patent lawyer, went through that process, and then uh, from there, spent 20 years in private practice, first as a patent agent, then a patent attorney, and then I became more of a generalist intellectual property lawyer, and I dealt with a wide variety of technologies and very big litigations. That naturally moved me into the e-discovery space, and so uh, I ended up uh, growing and managing a group at a very large law firm that was really an internal working group focused on e-discovery issues and best practices. Um, that moved me into more of a generalist technology lawyer background. Uh, I I left and started my own firm and uh, began adding privacy as part of my primary practice. Uh, and that, of course, led to information governance. So, <laughs> so it's been a long evolution over a period of time, but I, I really believe that all of these concepts are interconnected. And so I like to look at these digital technology issues, no matter how they arise in the business context, as really a, a larger general technology issues that re requires a, a thought process about a wide variety of legal disciplines. So I would say that's really my focus when I think about big data and information, is just thinking about all of these legal substantive areas that come into play when we're talking about those subjects. So when you think about auto classification in the context of information governance and in the context particularly of some of the clients that you deal with, what's the primary benefit they're trying to achieve by thinking about these technologies? So one of the things that I see companies struggle with is um, the very manual way of doing things and implementation of their policies and best practices, right? So I, I like to call it the policy fairy tale. You have a record retention schedule, people sign off on it, they say they've read it, they say they follow it, but often in organizations that don't have an, a mature information governance program, it's a highly manual process. And you have to make, and people have to follow it, it's very arduous, and ultimately the process breaks down. So one of the, I think the powerful aspects of information governance is you, train your tools to integrate those policy requirements as well as the legal and regulatory requirements. You train it and you get that feedback from it. You continue to iterate on that. And then this becomes an operational tool within your organization that can streamline your process and make it more consistent across the organization. And so, you know, implemented correctly once you go through that process and it actually becomes a live part of your information governance program, people start to understand that you're not just telling them it's going to make their life easier. It actually is making their <laughs> life easier. And so that's how I like to think about auto classification and how it can really be integrated into the human and data model to be a man in the middle that facilitates what we're doing more efficiently, effectively, and consistently. Oh my gosh, that is, that is, that is so spot on. I'm going to have to write that down. Uh, you know, one of the things that just drives me crazy is 
is the gap that exists between the intentions of policies and the reality of policy. And, and I think it's, I've always thought that, that one of the reasons for that is that we put this manual layer in between and assume that knowledge workers are gonna somehow have the time and interest and awareness to actually make those policies real. And, and, and auto classification and technologies like it can help put some structure and discipline and um, automated processes around that. And um, I think that's the only way we're gonna be able to get traction on this moving forward, given the volume and variety of information that's streaming into organizations from sort of every, every pore imaginable, but. Absolutely, and, and including supporting the full life cycle of data management, yep. right? So from the time it comes into a company to where it's stored in its system of record, to identifying how it should be treated from a privacy perspective or an information security perspective, all the way to the point where um, because of this intelligent understanding of the underlying data that's driven by an auto classification tool plus human uh, rules on top of that, we now know that we have a corpus of documents living in our digital landfill that's not needed for business uh, purposes any longer. And we can make the decision to get rid of that data um, as appropriate, right? So that's the other piece that's often missing from the process. And again, I find that that manual process of trying to identify that and get sign off in a uh, non-repeatable sort of ad hoc way, it's very difficult to do that. And so that's where we start to create these digital landfills that companies just continue to add to, but they're not they're not focusing on the right information and keeping it only as long as necessary. I chuckle a little bit because um, digital landfill was the, um, it goes back maybe 15 years, I guess, maybe even 20 years was the name of my blog for about, for about 10 years. Um, and it might be time to resurrect it again. But anyway, that's another, another whole story. So if you and I are in like, you know, rabid agreement about how important this is, um, what's keeping people from doing it? What stands in the way? What kind of barriers? John, you know, it's the same old story, different, it's different situation. What is it? I don't understand it. I can't touch it. I can't feel it. Why am I going to take this cost on to train it? How, how can I understand the value that it's going to bring? And why can't I just buy a tool as a solution, turn it on and call it a day? Why is it not like a spam filter? Why does it need the care and feeding for it to continue to exist and be effective? So, you know, the, it's just like e-discovery, it's just like AI, it's the same sort of education, implementation, how do I know to ask the right questions to get the right vendor on with the right solution. It's just that internal education process and that self-education process to make sure that we are articulating in an appropriate way the return on investment for this type of technology. So following up on that, and maybe as a last question, if you had one piece of advice to folks looking at this, what would it be? It would be talk to people in other organizations who have successfully implemented auto classification. Hear their stories, understand the case studies, because there's no better teacher than real life. And so when you're talking in a vacuum about how it can help your organization, I think it's helpful for others who really just don't understand the tool to understand the difference it has made in other organizations. So I've been here talking to Antigone Payton from Ridgeline International. She'll be speaking at the Mer Immerse event on January 27th. It's going to be a really fun event, I think. Uh, you guys are going to do some role playing in terms of uh, how you sell these things. You're also going to have um, a session in which people can ask you anything. And I'm looking forward to hearing how that will go. And uh, I'll see you on the 27th. And thank you for the time today. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I'm looking forward to my role as the grumpy lawyer during our uh, role play session. <laughs> Thanks so much. Take care.